In this video, we are discussing diffuse reflection and Lambertian reflection. So, at first we are going to discuss that is the Lambert's cosine law. In Lambert's object obeys Lambert's cosine law which states that the color C of a surface is proportional to the cosine of the angle between the surface normal and the direction of the light source. So, here you can consider this one that is one surface and that is the direction of the light is the direction of the light and here we are having this respective normal onto the surface and this is the respective angle in between these two and depending on this angle the cosine of this angle the respective uh, color of this surface will be decided. So, again I am repeating the Lebendian object obeys Lambert's cosine law which states that the color C of a surface is proportional to the, the cosine of the angle between the surface normal and the direction to the light source. So, that is the direction to the light source and that is the surface normal, this is angle. So, what will happen? This respective color of the surface will be directly proportional to the cosine. So, here you can, we are having this C as the color and it is directly proportional to cos of theta or in vector form we can also write it as C is directly proportional to n dot product i. So, thus the color of the surface will vary according to the cosine of the angle between the surface normal and the light direction assuming the light is distant relative to the object size. The geometry of the Lambert's law both n and i are unit vectors. So, here you can find this n and i. When a surface points away from the light, it should receive no light and this case can be verified by checking whether the dot product between this i and n is negative or not. Now, we are concentrating on diffuse reflection that is the Lambertian reflection. When a light hits an object and if the object has a rough surface, then it is reflected to various directions. You can find this one, this is the incident light and this particular object is having a rough surface. So, due to this roughness, the reflected lights will be obtained in various directions. Result, the light reflected to all directions. The smaller the angle between the incident vector and the normal vector is, the higher the chance that the light is reflected back. Okay. So, next one, when the angle is larger, the reflection light gets weaker because the chance the light is shadowed and masked increases. So, now what will happen? Let us suppose this is the normal to this surface and this is the angle of incidence. If the angle of incidence is smaller, then it is probability is high that most of the light will be reflected back to the, to the source of the light. Otherwise, if the angle is larger, then obviously that there will be the probability or the percentage of light which will be reflected back will be the probability will be less. Now, consider this one as an object and this is our light and this is a normal to this object surface. This is the angle between that that is our theta and here we have put our camera say. So, no dependence on the camera angle. So, here you can see in case of diffuse reflection. So, there is no dependence on the camera angle from where we are looking at this particular uh, at this particular point over this particular object. So, this is the basic theme behind the diffuse reflection. So, I that is the intensity is equal to I p k d cos of theta where I p will be denoting the light intensity and theta is the angle between the normal vector direction towards the light and k d is the diffuse reflectivity. So, this is the basic formula with the help of which we can calculate the intensity here. So, here we have discussed the Lambertian cosine formula and what is the diffuse reflection. Thanks for watching this video.